Hello, I'm Trish and welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to use the preconditioned wood that we prepared earlier and uh, <clears throat> here it is. <laughs> if you didn't catch that video, um, it's the video right before this one. I also have put it in a playlist uh, that is for preconditioning your wood because there are two different um, types of preconditioning. There's oil-based and there's water-based. So this time we did oil-based because I will be using an oil-based stain. Um, so we are going to use that piece of wood that we prepared together and we're going to do our first art piece together. I'm excited. So what you need is some oil-based wood stain and you want to make sure you're using oil-based because we preconditioned our wood for oil-based stain. There's a big difference. You don't want to use um, water-based uh, stain if you used oil-based preconditioner. So you need a stir stick because you want to make sure you're stirring your stain really really well. You need gloves to protect your hands. You need a lot of pieces of uh, cloth to do your staining because you're going to wrap it around your finger and use your finger for staining. You need a pencil and you need to have a little bit of a fingernail for those fine areas. If you don't have a fingernail, you can get a paintbrush that has a tip on it like this. I hope you can see that. Um, it's an angled tip. It's a little bit pointy. It's almost like a fingernail. And what you'll do is you will then wrap your cloth around that and use that for the fine areas. Okay, what kind of cloth do I use? I use t-shirts, um, old t-shirts, basically <clears throat> undershirts. They work the best. Um, my husband, when it's time to get him some new t-shirts, I just take his old ones. I keep them down here in a bin. This one actually is a, a brand new one. He didn't like the way it fit, so uh, now it's mine. And I just cut them up and um, <clears throat> use them, you know, in my workshop. And you can tell your friends, well, this is what I do. I tell my friends, save your husband's old t-shirts, um, your dad, your grandfather, whoever wears undershirts, have them save them. You don't want the ribbed kind, you want the smooth kind. And I tell you, they are invaluable if you're going to be doing wood staining. Okay, let's start our first project. <clears throat> we'll probably do a magnolia today. I think that's a good one to start with because if you're just learning to shade with wood stain, um, having a little bit larger area to shade, like on a magnolia, is excellent. Here we go. So, you first want to dip into your stain and then I dot it off on here because you don't want a huge amount on your cloth. You can always add more. You can layer it if you need to. You don't want to put too much on. So let's start with, let's do this petal up here and I'm going to turn so that I can get a better angle. And I'm just going to go along the edge of where this petal overlaps it to put some shading. And then I'm going to go to a clean part of my cloth, wrap my finger around it, and start scrubbing to pull the stain <clears throat> so that you don't get that hard line. There you have it. We have a little bit of a shade there. You can see this petal now is starting to pop out because we shaded where it overlaps to this petal. All right, well, let's keep going. So sometimes I will get enough on my cloth here that I won't even need to dip, but um, for now I'm gonna dip because I don't have enough on there yet to do that. But as you go through, you'll see you'll get a, kind of a dark spot here that you can use instead of dipping each time. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my centerpiece here where the pollen would be. If I just 
doing some dotting. And the reason I'm going to work on that right now is because I want it to stand out so that when I do the shading on this one, I can, when I finish the shading on that one, I can <clears throat> see what I'm doing with the centerpiece. So you can see I'm just kind of dabbing and it's like making little spots. And then here, okay, let me get it back oriented. So here along this petal, I am then going to put a line so that that petal stands out from this center. And I'm gonna just kind of pull it up a little. I don't, I don't want this completely filled because it's where the pollen is. So now I'm not going to put any more onto my cloth and I'm going to shade in here. And actually, I think that this petal needs to be larger. It needs to go like this. I'm going to turn for my angle and I'm going to use that to shade there get a different spot on my cloth that's clean and scrub 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 now if you're just starting out it might help you to do the outside first so that your petals really pop Matter of fact, I'm going to do that on this one. I'll do the rest of the petals after so that you can see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and stain all the outer part and have the flower pop out. So you're just going to run your finger along the edge of your flower the reason I often will do the flower first and not the outside is because, like you just saw me do, I will change my flower. I'll just go, oh, I think that petal needs to be smaller or bigger or whatever. Okay, so you're going to put some on and then you're going to wipe it off. Let me get another cloth here. And you can see because we pre-stained, I'm sorry, pre-conditioned this wood, it's not bleeding. So we're getting really good lines on the flower here. <clears throat> and this is nice and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's not blotchy. It's nice and smooth looking. Let's keep going. Okay, so one helpful tip too that I will share with you is that 
<clears throat> if you're going to remove excess stain from where close to the flower area, get a clean part of your cloth and then swipe away like that because you don't want to get stain in here where you're trying to keep it light or you haven't stained yet at all. And there you go. Okay, so the outside is done. So now we'll work on the inside. So now that I've done this outside, you can see that, so this is the outside of the petal that's lighter and the inside is darker where it's shaded. And I'm gonna do some shading here as well. <clears throat> so that it helps to form that petal. All right, so let's do a little bit more shading. Actually, I don't think I need to put more on here. Where's my, oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> this one. I've been using this one to do all the outside, so I have quite a bit on my rag already, or cloth. So, sorry, I'm not sure I was even under the um, camera there for a minute. I'll have to go back and watch the video. Okay, so now we're going to do some shading down in here. You can see that now that we've done the outside, you can see here's the outside of the petal. It's light. We haven't done shading there to show the edge of the, the petal. Now we're going to do some here because petals are rounded and we want to show that. So we're going to pull some down in here like this, get my cloth, my clean cloth, and scrub. So what you want to do is you want to look at your reference photo if you're going off of a reference photo and, and look at the shading on the flower, where is it darker? <clears throat> and if you have trouble seeing that, you can always turn it into a black and white photo and work play with the contrast and the brightness of it and get that shading to really show. And then you can work from there. Okay, so I'm happy with that so far. I might do a little more on it later after I do the other petals, but I want to work on the other petals first so that I don't overshade that one. So this is the inside of a petal, and this is the outside of that same petal that's curving in. So I'm going to do a little bit of shading along here. to show that petal curving in. And scrub, scrub, scrub. So it's a lot of alternating from your stain cloth to your clean cloth and scrubbing. I'm gonna turn this so I have a better angle because I want to get the shape of this up like that. So I'll turn it like that so you can see. And now I'm going to go back and scrub that to blend. Now I do come in um, after the fact with my paintbrush and stain if I need to, to put some additional lines. <clears throat> and we'll do that at the end if we need to. Okay, so I'm gonna, so you can see I work on just a small section at a time sometimes. That's what I'm doing here because I want the shape of this to be right. I didn't shape it really well with my pencil to be honest. So I'm gonna come a little bit more with this stain here and scrub it. The details matter. Right? And I'm dragging that stain down here. Even though I didn't put stain there, I am dragging it down when I'm scrubbing. Alright, so now you're starting to see the shape of that petal there. And I'm going to, to do some shading in here, in this area. 
because I don't want to make I don't want this whole petal to be stained we're just doing where it's shaded so now I'm going to go along my line there I'm actually going to bring it out a little bit because I want to change the shape a little and along there so you see you need a lot of these so that you can have a clean spot and I'm going to shade in here so that the rest of this petal isn't stained but you can see the shape of it so it's all a matter of playing with your shading Okay, now let's do this petal so that this petal will pop out even more. This petal is, um, it's going to have quite a bit of shading up here in the top. And then this part down here will not be shaded as much or at all, really. So here we go. I'm going to dab this off so I don't have too much on there. We're going to start here along this part here. And remember, the petal is rounded, so you want to do your shading that way. We're leaving it darker up here and I might come back with even more stain and layer it <clears throat> to make it uh, differentiate from that center pollen. I may even come back with my paintbrush there and put a line there. We shall see. You can see I often use the top of my fingernail and go like this because it's easier to get a good clean line that way for me. You do what works for you. You have to play with it and figure it out. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. I would suggest taking the same flower, maybe not this one, but a flower of your choice, and stenciling, not stenciling, um, tracing it onto some wood and just over and over and over practicing your shading. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna scrub this a little bit more. Get it nice and blended. I don't really wanna go down here to the bottom because I'm gonna do shading in this petal and I want that petal to stand out on the bottom. But I am going to put a little more here to make that darker. Now remember, this is a kind of a rugged look. Um, so you don't want it to be, you know, all kinds of detail. You want just the shading. That's the whole point of this type of art with just the one color stain. There, that's better. Now I didn't wipe it off there. I just left it, <clears throat> just the stain. I just wiped it off lower. So now you can see the shading up higher. All right, let's keep going. Here we go. Actually, I want to fix this a little bit, I think. I'm going to leave it for now and come back to that. Let me get the other petals done and then we'll come back and do the fine details. I'm thinking I need to put a um, stronger line there. All right. Let's do this petal. So I'm going to turn this, make sure I have quite a bit on there. Mm 
I'm going to put a shadow here. Whoops. So this is a petal that is <clears throat> cupped. So you can see it's cupped here. This is the outside of the petal. And let's see. Okay, so I think I wanna do a little bit of shading here to show the roundness of that petal. going to dab a little bit on there and then blend it <clears throat> so I can get rid of that hard line that's right there. There we go. Blend, blend, blend. So I just took my clean cloth and I dabbed it on my dabbing cloth to get just a tiny bit on there. There we go. like that. So it's just barely shading it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now let's do this one. This one's also cupped, but I think we need to put a little bit of a shadow here because it's overlapping. That petal's overlapping right there. So we're just going to put a tiny bit of stain. I didn't even dip it. Just a tiny bit of stain there. And blend. Sorry, I pulled it closer to me so I can get a better line. Get it back under the camera. There, that's better. I like that. <clears throat> so I'm going to do shading here on the outside of this petal and then here because of the way we have um, positioned our shading in, with the light on this one. So I didn't add any more on my cloth. You see, once you get to a certain point, you don't really need to add any more. <clears throat> Drag, 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 scrub, scrub, scrub. Okay, so I am gonna go along here a little bit so you can see the outside of this petal that's here.
Okay. Very good. Let's keep going. So the shape of this petal is not quite right. I would need to put a little bit more stain there. So I will do that now to fix that. I'm going to bring that up. There, yeah, that's better. Because this is the back side of this complete petal. <clears throat> so it's kind of in a, in a cup shape. Looks like a cup. Okay, so let's do some shading on this. We'll need to add some more now onto my cloth. Dab. And drag. Okay, so there's our line. So now we're going to start shading from here going down. Just putting small amounts, not even filling the whole space, you can see. And then I will shade it with the clean cloth. Move it around with the clean cloth. All right, beautiful. I think I want to make this more rounded. So I'm going to follow this line and ignore my pencil line there. Actually, let's see if I can erase that. If you do have to erase your line, it might make a mess like this one just did. Then you just go in, use your cloth and rub it off. It's the oil that we put on the wood to precondition it that causes that. Okay, so now I'm going to follow this line and make this a little more rounded. Because magnolia, that's why I really like the magnolia flower, is it has these really round, there we go, that's much better. A really round cup-like um, petals. So we're going to stain right there to get a shadow and I'm going to take the stain out like this. So I'm not going all the way to the bottom of that petal. Let me turn it this way so you can see. I'm not going all the way to the bottom of that petal. I went just from that little corner there. and around because I really want it to show the outside of that other petal and since it overlaps you want to shade along there and then I'm just going to pull and scrub there we go nice I want to really scrub right here to blend that because I want this edge of the petal to not be shaded. And I don't want a hard line from my stain. This line here can be hard, but not here. All right, so now you can see this petal is, is starting to pop out. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to come along here and make that even darker along the edge, just along the edge. To, to refine that a little bit. Not wipe it off totally, just underneath it. Very nice. All right, here we go. Let's do this edge here. Let's darken that and shade it so that you can see this petal. It's all about making those petals pop out. 
I'm not going to put any more stain on my cloth just yet. I want to see how much I have on there to do this edge. Perfect. Okay, let me pull that down. You don't want to wait too long in between adding stain and then um, using your clean cloth to pull it down because you want it to still be wet so that you can do this shading. There we go. Nice. I'm going to add on this petal I did this on the previous one I did too. I added right here because I wanted to. <laughs> so I'm going to add so that this is the inside and this is the outside to give it a little more dimension. So I'm going to pull, make this more of a cup here by staining, making that darker so that the petal's more cupped because that petal looks kind of flat to me. So let's do that by just pulling down like this. I didn't add any more on here. I'm just using what I have. Because <clears throat> I don't want it too dark. I do want it to blend though, so let's scrub that. Yeah, there we go. That looks more curved. I'll work on that one a little bit more. I'm thinking I can make this even look like it's coming up by adding some staining there. Let me draw it first. Maybe. like that so it looks like just the very end of it is coming up so then I I'll just do a light shade in there There we go. That's better. So you can see the little bit of white here because the it's cupping. I know I probably have said cup a million times in this video. <laughs> so it's cupping a little bit here too, which I like. I think that <clears throat> I will make those lines a little bit more defined with a little bit darker shading there. And I'm not going to wipe that off. I'm going to leave it dark. So it looks like the end of that petal there is coming up. I like that. Very nice. Okay, here we go. Let's do this one. Yeah. All right. I have to think about it every time I, I do one. Actually, I think I'm going to add to this too. I'm going to make that like that. I like that. So that's why... I, I often don't do the outside first because I want to make it bigger, smaller. You know, I change it all the time, <laughs> constantly changing my flower. Like that. And pull. And then turn. Sometimes I'll work on a Lazy Susan. I'll put my work on my, I'll tape it onto a Lazy Susan so I can just spin the Susan. All right. 
find a clean spot and nice there we go so that already is giving that petal quite a bit of shape isn't it so we'll do some shading in here so that that can be more rounded I'm going to get a little more on my cloth, dot it off, and do some light shading here. Just need to move quick on this one because I don't want it to stay dark. There we go. <clears throat> I try to always reorientate my work after doing some shading so that I can see what it looks like upright. So I always turn it back around and go, okay, where else do I need shading now? Because you want to make sure you're obviously ending up with what you want your artwork to look like. And if you have it upside down and you're shading and you turn it back and you're like, oops, I shaded the wrong spot. So I'm going to pull this down just a little bit here. So that you can see that the flower cups like that. Beautiful. Love it. So now for this flower, I'm going to shade along here so this part of that top of that petal will stick out a bit. Top of this petal. But I have to turn this around so I can get the right side. for my Because I'm very right-handed when it comes to putting this stain on. I can use my left hand for quite a few things. I'm ambidextrous in a, in a lot of ways. But for the stain, I really have to use my right hand. Okay. Good, nice. Okay, so I am going to bring it up further. This edge. Like that. And blend. Blend, blend, blend. There. So you can see that petal now is, is curling in. And let's do some shading in here. bit more on my cloth because it's drying out now. I don't want a lot on there though. So I'm going to just do a little bit here. I'm going to bring that down a bit. Down, down. Maybe even a little more into there. Okay, so we, now we have all of our petals 
completely stained <clears throat> or shaded I should say um, now I'm gonna go back and see where I want to you know change it up a little bit or add more detail that kind of thing so I do think I'd like to fix this petal a little bit it needs to have a little more of a point there maybe or I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that um, I'd like to fix this here too it needs to have a little bit more so I think what I might do is use my um, tool to get a finer line again this is just a paintbrush with um, a nice sharp edge kind of like it would your fingernail would be but it's easier to get in there so I'm gonna just add along here so that you can see that edge of that petal better yeah that's much much better much much better okay let's keep going I'm gonna work on this petal a little bit and get that line actually I need to do it this way let's get that line pretty defined better 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 nice I like it so I think I'll go around all the petals and just refine any lines that need to be done Now you don't have to do this step. I like to do this step. Um, you can leave it just the way it is. Um, or you can add more or less, whatever you want. <laughs> more or less, doesn't matter. So now, <clears throat> a little trick. This is my blotting cloth that I've been using. I'm going to actually dip that into my stain and leave a good amount on there. And I'm going to set it over here and instead of dipping this into my can I'm going to just tap it on there because that will help me control how much I actually get on here and then always check it always go to the edge and check it so let's fix this one there that's better much much better yeah <clears throat> okay I'm gonna do the same with the other side fix the edge of that whoops the cloth kind of unraveled That's better. Okay. If you want to do really, really, really fine lines, you can use a, a, br a paintbrush, obviously a thinner one than this. But and then you just clean your paintbrush off in some um, either lacquer thinner or paint thinner. And I'm just going to go around and do this on, on the whole flower. And <clears throat> at the end, we'll stop and chat.
Okay, now I'm going to do some dotting on here to um, show the center of that flower. So I'm going to use my brush, the end of my brush. I'm going to dip it, dot it off, and just random dots. Okay, so how you get random dots is to dot in a triangle and not always the same size triangle. <clears throat> it could be a, an oddly shaped triangle, you know, one that's a little flatter or one that's taller or but that's how you that's how you do random. Okay, so we're going to let this dry, and after it dries, <clears throat> I'm going to fix this line here, after it dries, we will seal it. So, I usually like to let my work dry for 24 hours before sealing it. Oops, I went a little too far there. I had too much on my brush, see? There you go, that's how it happens. <laughs> We were just about done, so I'm just going to blend that right there. And to be honest, sometimes you'll make a mistake. You'll be able to see it forever because you made the mistake, but others won't even notice it. So I'm just going to fix this right here. So I just changed the shape of that petal. <clears throat> okay. So, as I was saying, after it dries for 24 hours, we'll come back and I will show you how to seal this. Okay, so here we are. The next day, this is completely dry, ready to go. Forgot to tell you a couple things, though. Um, when you finish using your oil-based stain, you want to lay out your rags, like I've done here, and let them dry before throwing them in the garbage. The reason why is because if you crumple them up like this and throw them in the garbage or, or all together uh, and they're still wet, it is an oil stain so they can spontaneously combust. And that's the last thing you want. <laughs> so make sure you lay them out flat, nice and flat, let them dry, and in the morning you can throw them away Okay, the other thing I forgot to tell you is if you wanted to uh, darken it up and you could wait a couple hours or even just an hour to let it sit and dry and then do another layer of stain. I did darken up around the, the outside to make the flower pop a little bit more. I didn't record that because you already saw me do that step once, so it was just exactly the same, but going over the stain. So now we are ready to seal it. So this is what I like to use. I like to use Furniture Salve. Um, you can get this from Wise Owl. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get paid by them. This is the one I like to use. Um, they have it in different scents. I just use the unscented because I never know if I'm going to have a customer who has allergies and I don't want to have one that is scented send it to their house and then have them say oh I'm allergic to lavender or I'm allergic to jasmine whatever the smell is so I buy this one that's unscented <clears throat> very very easy to use I use this on my wall art if I were to do a piece of furniture that was going to be heavily used for setting drinks on and that kind of thing, uh, maybe a side table or, or a dining table, I would use um, polyurethane. 
and I will be doing furniture in future videos so I will show you how to do that step but for now let me show you how to use this Wise Owl unscented hemp furniture salve so super super simple you need the salve you need a couple of paper towels I just took a paper towel and cut it in half and you'll use the paper towel to wipe it on. You don't need a huge amount. <clears throat> so you're gonna wipe it on generously. Um, but again, something this size, you really don't need a large amount. You just wanna make sure it's getting nice and wet. I hope you can see that shine. I put my light up so that you can so that hopefully you could see the shine. <clears throat> and you just cover the whole thing. You don't really have to go with the grain of the wood with this product. Um, it, if you've ever used a wax on, a, on wood, it's kind of the same where you just get it on there and then you're going to buff it off. But you want to completely saturate the wood. <clears throat> Let me check. I think I got it all. So you're going to completely saturate the wood. And then you could use the same paper towel if you didn't uh, use the whole thing. Mine's dry on two sides, so I'm going to use the same paper towel. And I'll save the other one for later when we really buff it. <clears throat> so now that I have it all on, I'm just gonna lightly wipe it off. I'm just taking off the surface, the extra on the surface. And again, you don't have to go with the wood grain. You can go sideways if you want to. Doesn't matter. But I'll probably let it sit for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll buff it together. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, while we wait for the furniture salve to sit for a bit, before we buff it off. I wanted to show you this cute little table. I bought this at an estate sale. It was only like $10. And it's not the right color for my house, so I wanted to take care of that. We're going to, in the next video, we will do this project together. I will sand down the top and we'll do a, a nice design on it with some wood stain. And then the bottom we'll use chalk paint. I do mix my own chalk paint. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, make sure you check out the next video as well. Mark your um, <clears throat> notifications bell so it'll pop up for you. All right, now back to the salve. It's been an hour, so I'm going to take my blue cloth and I'm just going to really buff this. Give it a good buff. This is going to get any residue that's left over and just polish it up, give it a really nice finish. You see some coming off of my cloth here. It's going to have a, a beautiful sheen on it. So I will I'll just flip it over. Buff, buff, buff. It's a good workout. Well, at least for one arm. <laughs> I'd have to switch hands <laughs> to get an even workout. So there you go. That's your, your first one. Practice the magnolia because it has nice, large spaces to practice your shading. Get some scrap wood even and sand it to down to a 220 grit and do your pre-stained wood conditioner and just do a bunch of them. Or you could even just do the petals. You don't even have to do the whole flower. Just put a bunch of petals on the wood and practice the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, practice the staining, the uh, shading. <laughs> I would love to do projects, 
projects suggested by you. So please comment below and let me know what your favorite flower is or what flower you would like to see done. And um, maybe we'll do it in, in a future video. So I hope to see you in the next one. Hope you like and subscribe and um, see you soon. Bye.